Hey there, Sabre friends, Space Windu here. It's Saber time again with a new custom lightsaber I built for James. This is the hilt is the uh, Graflex 2.0 by Corbanth, and it's a really nice hilt that we set up for Empire Strikes Back look. And although uh, James doesn't care too much about accuracy, I did include some uh, accurate parts of the saber, including the uh, sloth furnace clamp card here, um, the circuit card which is accurate on one side to the Empire Strikes Back, and on the other side uh, the Force Awakens. Um, so in here I have the Empire Strikes Back card and uh, fits really nicely in there and then you clamp it down. I have the KR Sabres brass inserts for the Graflex pins. I love the Graflex pins. The faux recharge port look is something uh, I really like. So to top it all off, we added the uh, brass strips from KR Sabres. You can get them off his Etsy page. And we use the Corbanth uh, given Greeblies for the buttons, the aux button is here at the top and this one is blade retention and the activation button is the little tab button there so um, just be sure not to um, turn the wrong thing here for the thumb screw this one here is for the blade retention and this one here at the top is the aux button. Do not try to turn that one the way that that's installed. Um, it doesn't separate properly if you if you want if you want to screw that 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 needs to stay put and uh, this one is for blade retention. You can actually take this one completely out um, but definitely loosen it if you are going to uh, go in and put a blade. Uh, for the grips, um, I wasn't um, doing something completely accurate here, but I put some screws that I really liked, uh, some flathead um, screws and some washers for the Empire Strikes Back look there. And I put some brass screws to kind of go along with the brass um, faux recharge port at the top, the Graflex pins, um, I put some brass screws down here at the D-ring. Okay, so the pommel insert has the holes. That was um, the way James sent me this saber from Corbanth. And uh, there's a couple other parts from KR. I think maybe this screw I got from KR Sabres on Etsy. There's a couple Graflex parts that I got. And uh, what you can do here, if you want to see uh, the um, operation of the saber to actually get the saber going and to use the rice port, um, you have to unscrew the pommel cap. Okay, and right there you could see that there is the um, crystal focus, the bottom of the board, uh, the rice port, and the recharge. So what you do is you just have to pull out the kill key. Um, I'm going to include the kill key that came with the um, Goth 3D Designs chassis from Darth Ryo. There was a uh, kill key that is a turnable kill key. I haven't used that yet. Um, I'm just using a standard kill key from the custom saber shop. You might want to... This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. You might want to use the uh, the other kill key. Okay, so um, another thing uh, I changed as far as accuracy was these uh, um, under light, uh, these under lights on the uh, clamp card. So they are three millimeter RGB fast changing LEDs. So it's a pretty cool effect. Um, where I don't like the uh, the gaps on a normal clamp card that are here 
and here. So what I've done is I've set those three millimeter um, RGB lamps into um, these plastic housings and the plastic housing ends at the bottom and the top uh, there on the clamp card so you get the cool uh, lighting effect not only on the top but on the sides and it's also solid so there's no more um, gap there. I made James a cool uh, blade plug off of a blade plug um, that somebody made me a few years back but uh, what I did was I installed uh, serial L class 2 lighting system into the blade plug so while you're not using the full length blade you can see the saber is on like a normal single LED saber although this one's the string blade there is a delay on the power button here so you can't accidentally turn off the saber there's just one click to turn it on and then you hold it for a second We'll turn off the saber. Um, I'm not sure if you could see on the blade plug, but the ignition is in a ring. The sound fonts I installed on here are uh, basically um, all about the the uh, Graflex. So the first one that you hear right now is Heirloom by Mad Cow and uh, it is a uh, super awesome like episode 4 font Can uh, show you guys the fonts that we have on here. This is heirloom. As I've said, let's go to font number two. That's the menu sound for Heirloom. This is the menu background noise on the Plector Labs card. And then uh, you just cycle through to the next font by tapping the aux button. What's in there? Only what you take with you. So you moved on to the next font. Um, that's the menu sound for font number two uh, called Best Bin 2 by Mad Cow. This one is an awesome representation of uh, the Best Bin. Um, ignitions and lightsaber sounds that Luke used um, in his confrontation with Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back. So I'm going to hold down the um, aux button to select this font number two. Vader wants us all to... now, he doesn't want you at all. He's after somebody called a uh, Skywalker. I love the hum on Bespin 2. I think this is one of the best sound fonts ever. So James picked like most of these fonts that are on here and then I kind of squeezed in a couple that I wanted. Um, let's go to the next. So I simply held down the uh, aux button on the top here to gain access to the menu. Reset the chain of Skywalker. This is just the best. This is uh, Juan Sis. Uh, um, Empire Strikes Back Legends font which uh, Juan Sith has Legends font for the uh, original movies. 
They are amazing. Um, they have some quotes in there. If you have the movie on and then you have a saber like this and you're using that font um, at that scene in Empire Strikes Back at the end, it's just the greatest. So I'll give you a little preview. The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Uh, James wanted Calibrate on here, so this is another Mad Cow font. And what this is, is like if you have a saber with a removable um, core or a chassis you can undo or a saber you could take apart, um, Calibrate is really cool because uh, you can display the lightsaber open or, you know, like in a case of a Graflex like this, the bottom half comes off and you can have it displayed. So let me show you... Um, what that looks like. What I've done is I just undid the clamp card here, which um, makes a sloth furnace card slide out. You can see the LEDs there. And what I'm going to do is um, is be very careful when I unscrew this. The chassis is tight. Everything's tight in the in the lightsaber. I'll show you some modifications I had to make to the chassis to actually get everything to fit. Uh, Crystal Focus LS is not the type of lightsaber that does well with tiny batteries or to skimp on batteries and stuff like that so I had to make room for a sizable battery pack which meant we lost part of the crystal chamber um, so let me show you guys so you just start to unscrew feeling listening for anything you don't want to crush anything or rotate anything that's um, not supposed to be caught up so it's always been clear for me so far but I just want to be um, careful. Okay, so once I undo it and you can start to see these uh, little holes right here, um, you can twist and pull the bottom casing off. Alright, so what you see here is um, the inner chassis. Now the chassis uh, goes up all the way um, to about here, um, but it's compressed and uh, screw tight uh, fitted into um, it's actually screwed in and it's and it's very uh, it's very tight fit to the Vader's vault one inch blade adapter for the Corbanth uh, line of 2.0 Graflex sabers now I highly recommend that if you want to build a Corbanth Graflex you go for the Vader's vault or another style one inch adapter um, because it's just more universal to have a one inch blade and I like the way they look that's my opinion um, they come with a 7 8 inch blade holder so to convert the saber out of, um, you know, go through the act of actually replacing the inner core top half of this of this lightsaber um, to the Vader's Vault uh, one inch blade adapter, which is a hunk of aluminum configured uh, for the buttons, uh, like the button setup that I have, and uh, configured for the one inch blade holder with a spot drilled out for the Darth Ryo chassis. So you can uh, go to Vader's Vault website, check out this one inch adapter uh, that's in here, and then there is a Goth 3 Designs chassis that works with that. Um, the chassis recommendation was for uh, 16340s. That's a type of lithium ion battery pack, but the thing is, uh, that wouldn't give you a lot of runtime with a string blade lightsaber. So what I've done here is uh, actually cut out part of the chassis that was a crystal chamber ex uh, exposed right here. And I have a uh, 18500 uh, twin pack lithium ion re um, rechargeable battery um, with protection from the custom saber shop that is uh, inside here. Uh, that it's butted up right against the speaker, which there wasn't actually enough room for a, a two watt bass speaker. So I have a Regal in here, provides pretty awesome sound. Um, 
I actually really like the way regals sound. Um, the problem with uh, regals is usually eventually it will blow. Um, the two watt bass speaker never blew on me ever. Um, so I would have rather had a two watt bass speaker in here, but the um, fact of the matter is when it came down to it, every millimeter counted here and there was only enough room for a regal with a bit of protection. Um, that sits right here. The Plector Labs Crystal Focus LS is right below that and the recharge ports and, and the wires and the rice port. Now you have access to this stuff with the bottom half still on as I showed you before. You just have to unscrew the um, the bottom pommel part which is what I would recommend doing on your normal use of, the, of this saber. Um, there was another part of the chassis down here that I had to modify uh, just to give us There's a, the Crystal Focus LS is a m couple millimeters longer than regular Crystal Focus. So I had to adjust things a little bit, um, but we still have access to screw on the bottom half and to screw on the pommel without any interference there. Um, so just to show you, like calibrate um, which is the font we are on it right now. This font by Mad Cow just ha is like a tuning your lightsaber type of font. So, um, you might want to have it kind of displayed. Like every time you hit uh, one of the buttons, you get some, instead of blaster effects on the aux button, you get these like tuning style buttons. And then, even swings and things are, you know, it's it's pretty cool. You can um, have fun with that in a different way um, other than just swinging around like a, a lightsaber. This one kind of acts like you're tuning it. So there we have uh, the Calibrate font, which is number four. Uh, there's two more fonts left. Let me just screw on the bottom here. So I undid the clamp card. You just lift that up. Um, I am going to turn the uh, this bottom half as I push it forward. Then it'll catch into the threads. Give it a couple turns. No need to go all the way, that will uh, disallow our pommel cap from actually going on. So I don't uh, turn it too much, so I just want to align maybe um, one of these bottom grip bars with the clamp card, just to make it look pretty. Set the clamp card in place. I can screw on the pommel. Okay, let's go back into the menu and just get to the next font. This is Rogue by Mad Cow, another one that James uh, requested. And this is a really awesome font as well. Um, kind of like a really cool Jedi font. <laughs> This has a really cool sound. I, I love this one. Okay, and the last font I put on here is uh, the Force Awakens Graflex font by Lord Blaco. You gotta have this one on your Graflex uh, for when you watch episode 7.
Hey, last thing, let me just show you your blade. Um, the blade I made for this is an enhanced blue. So this is an enhanced blade tube from the Custom Saber Shop, um, which uh, makes blue light a little brighter. So maybe it's like 15% brighter than a normal tube. I would say uh, with the, uh, as you can see there, there's an eight pin dim plug, plugs into the emitter of this lightsaber. And uh, we're running, I think about 102, um, 360 degree blue LEDs in five millimeter size. Uh, those are 3.2 volt LEDs wired in serial L class two. If you don't know what that means, go to the Plector Labs website and then check out the uh, instruction manual for the Crystal Focus LS. And it'll explain how to make one of these blades for the Crystal Focus and have pictures. And that's how I learned how to make the blade um, and learned all the terms and stuff like that. Um, so all that info is available at Plector Labs if you want to know uh, what that means. Um, another thing from the Custom Saber Shop was this blade tip. This is a um, bullet blade tip that I have drilled out about a quarter inch uh, into the center. And one of the blue LEDs at the tip of this blade, uh, one of the, you know, the hundredth LED, whatever you want to call it, is actually poking through um, this blade tip to try to make the blade tip uh, as full as could be. And the flash on clash of this blade is made of cool white, three millimeter LEDs, and there's about 67 of them in here. Um, even still, there's 170 LEDs. The blade is still very light. It's about 33 inches long, maybe about 31 exposed when it's inserted into the lightsaber. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, because with the Graflex, it's kind of tricky um, because of these bunny ears, okay? So the bunny ears are kind of stretched to their max. Um, because I have the Vader's Vault one inch adapter. Um, so you have to squeeze the bunny ears open to get your uh, blade apparatus in or out. So the first thing we're gonna do is undo the blade retention. I've already undone this flathead screw right here, which actually acts as a second blade retention uh, if you wanna tighten that. I, I tighten it when I put in your blade or your uh, or your blade plug um, just so it doesn't come out and we don't lose it. But it's not really necessary for blade retention. Um, it just could become a second blade retention if you need. So what, what I did was I undid um, that uh, thumb screw there and I'm gonna squeeze the bunny ears. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this blade plug straight out. You never wanna twist. Um, you never want to twist like either the string blade, like sometimes in a, in a normal saber, people twist the, the blade to come out. You never want to do that with the string blade because you'll you'll crunch all the uh, all the connections there. What I did here was aligned the. Let's see if I can catch the light there. Um, with with the blade retention is align the bottom of the dim plug. So, um, and that's gonna stay the way it is. Then what you have to do is match that up to the bottom of the blade. So as you can see, there's one part, it's at the top of the video. And that part is uh, the bottom. So let me, let me show you, like that's the bottom um, where it's flat. So I'm gonna squeeze the uh, bunny ears here slide the blade down and I heard it click in. Tighten this screw Tighten that screw a little bit just so we don't lose that screw. And uh, as you can see, it 
some of the fonts here. I have the uh, the blaster setting set to the way you could see it right now, uh, where one random segment goes out, and then other fonts I have it where that doesn't happen. It just the whole blade um, kind of does an effect. Um, so it's just kind of random. Like let me go to uh, another font. So as you can see with uh, Heirloom, there isn't any uh, blaster random effect. It's just an entire blade. So I, I, I like that. I like both effects kind of. You have to play with it. Um, anything like that is changeable via the rice. So what you can do is you can take off your pommel cap, put your rice cable in uh, from the Custom Saber Shop. You can download that free program off of Plector Labs or uh, Custom Saber Shop. I think you might need the driver off of custom saber shop and the program to run this off of Plector Labs. Um, you can change a bunch of the settings through the rice very easily. And the last thing here is the songs. Um, the tracks Okay, so it's the seventh uh, sound font section, which is the tracks. And that's what we're in right now. And I'm not going to play too much of this, get bounced off YouTube, but um, the cool thing is like the blade reacts to it as it plays the songs. Hold down the aux button for a second to go to the next song. Which is just the uh, eye tracks section. So you just go to the seventh sound bank. What's in there? Three, four, five, six, seven. And hold down the button there. So it starts playing some songs. Now YouTube is going to kick me off uh, if I let this song go. But the cool thing is, is that the blade is activated. Um, with the song. You just hold down the aux button for a second or two to get to the next song. And there's about 17 songs here. And just hold down the button for like three seconds to uh, go back to the last sound font we were at. All right, everybody, thanks for taking a look at this video. Um, I had a really awesome time building the Saber. Um, props to Dan, my friend uh, Revan Reborn, off of the FX Saber Forums, who did a lot of the wiring on the Saber. We hung out uh, for a couple days and completed this, and it was a lot of fun. Um, so thanks, Dan, and we really had a great time. And um, I'll be shipping the Saber out to James tomorrow. And I hope he really likes it. I think he will. I've seen a few pictures of it and things like that. And uh, I think it really came out awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks for checking out this video. And I will catch you guys soon. Please hang up and try again.